looking at are healthy. According to a report from the Focus for Health Foundation, approximately 27% of American children with disabilities or chronic illnesses require long-term stays in the hospital. Sharing the story of her own childhood illness, actress and author Austin Highsmith has written a new book focused on giving hope to families who are facing the emotional needs and the impact that a prolonged illness can have on the entire family. The book is called The Miracle Tree, and Austin joins us now to tell us more about it. Austin, thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me. And to give people a, a little bit of a reminder of the things that you've been in, Dolphin Tale, yeah, right? Dolphin Tale and Dolphin Tale 2, um, are, is, that's what I'm best known for, mm -hmm. um, because those movies give inspiration to children literally around the world. Well, you had a childhood experience that yes. launched this particular action. Yes. Tell us about it. Well, um, actually through Dolphin Tail, they hired me to be a spokesperson for the aquarium and we ended up working with a bunch of uh, sick children and I met a little girl that had the same condition I did and that inspired me to share the story of what I went through as a, as a little girl. I had something called post-orbital cellulitis and it required an emergency life-saving surgery and this was at Christmas and my father went down to the Christmas tree in the children's ward and he prayed and he said, "If God, if you save my daughter this Christmas, I promise I will come back with my family every Christmas to say thank you, and we haven't missed a year in 35 years. Are you serious? How old were you, and how long were you hospitalized? I was two and a half, and I was there about three weeks. Wow, that's a yeah. That, <laughs> yeah, that your parents must have been a wreck. They were, and there was actually nowhere for for me to really go when I was uh, in the hospital at that age. So my dad would like wheel me around and. And we went to the smoker's lounge because there was literally nowhere for the kids to go. So my dad was actually part of an initiative of building a, a, a children's location for the kids to go to at the, the local hospital. Tell me more about the aquarium that you got involved with yes. while filming Dolphin Tales in Florida. So Winter the Dolphin, is it's a true story about this little dolphin who lost her tail in a crab trap and they put a prosthetic tail on her. And the aquarium is a functioning animal hospital and it's become a, a destination for make-a-wish visits, visits and sick children and veterans and everything from around the world because this little dolphin just inspires people to keep going and children will watch the movie before their you know ninth heart surgery or before they do their next round of chemo or whatever they're dealing with it inspires them to persevere so um, I've been fortunate enough to be able to work with a bunch of these children and I, I I cannot tell you it is the best job in the entire world. And that's what inspired you to write this story. Yes. Just give us a little brief idea <laughs> of the story and, and, and the plot. It's, it's a true story about my own time in the hospital and about you know my family's tradition of going to visit the tree. But it's also uh, meant to break down the hospital experience for children, because even if you're not in the hospital yourself, you're most likely going to visit somebody there at some point. So it can be very scary for kids, like what is that IV thing, you know, what does a doctor do, what does a nurse do? So I, I break that down a little bit for children so that they can understand what's happening so it's less scary. And also to give sick kids visibility. I think that's really important to make them feel normal. I know you don't remember much from being a two and a half <laughs> year old, but I'm sure you're, you've spoken with your parents at, yeah. about it. And I think a lot of kids feel... Um, a loss of control. Yes. They, it's not just fear. It's just you know feeling it's like you're in this world of grown-ups, and you don't yeah. feel normal, right? You don't, and and that's one of the things that I wanted to help is for children to feel normal when they're going through these these circumstances because they're not alone a lot of people have been through it you know I hope that my own story can show them that there is hope at the end of the tunnel and that they can they can see that they're they're part of, a, of an experience that a lot of people have gone through. Um, and that's actually why I started, uh, I'm in the process of creating a 501c3 foundation that a portion of my own book proceeds will go towards. And then that will go towards the funding and treatment of um, children with rare illnesses. Um, because a lot of these kids, they have invisible illnesses, and they and it's, it's even more isolating because they know that they're struggling, but people can't see it. And I want to bring visibility to their conditions and hopefully provide some sort of financial, you know, it's a wonderful cause and probably and a filling a great need. We have some great children's hospitals, as you know. Here, yes. So. Yeah. Austin Highsmith, thank you. Good. Good luck with it. Okay. Thank you and so it's much. First of a series of books, right? Uh, not from this topic, but I am writing more. All right. <laughs> the Miracle Tree is available today, including a digital format. It's available at local book retailers or online. Visit miracletreebook.com for more information. <laughs> Thanks.